Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector. Every Wednesday, Mark, along with his special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark is a tested, certified, and professional spiritual medium, metaphysical teacher, healer, and spiritual advisor with a spiritual practice based in Seattle, Washington. You are the inspired and the inspiration. And good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be in this beautiful, transforming, awakening, healing planet of ours. This is Inspired Living. I am your host, Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector. I just want to say you are the inspiration uh, for doing these shows each and every month when we come on the air here on Ohm Times Radio. And I just want to say, first and foremost, uh, thank you for another amazing year of shows, podcasts, People that have come on Inspired Living to share their knowledge and their wisdom with us. And today's going to be my last episode uh, for 2022, but we'll be back for one more episode in December. Uh, we're going to be talking about angels. We're going to have an angel expert on, and I thought that was a great way to celebrate the holidays, to celebrate December, and it also gets us ready for our eighth season of Inspired Living Radio, if you can believe that. Eight seasons we've been doing this. And I just want to give a shout out to all of the inspired listeners around the globe. Our page is growing leaps and bounds on Facebook. Uh, each week we have new followers, new inspired listeners uh, that are engaging with this concept with this energy with this vibration and frequency to bring positivity uh, into our world to bring transformation to bring healing our world is so much in need of that and it's just an honor to be on a ranked list of the 100 most inspirational podcasts to follow in 2022 and listen to in 2022 and we're going to hopefully try to uh, recapture that and keep that energy and momentum going into 2023 and we are um, we're currently at number 28 it fluctuates depending on who's downloading who's listening who's leading reviews but it's because of you the listeners of inspired living that has allowed us to be on this list and this list has some very big names i'm talking michelle obama i'm talking oprah winfrey i mean when you see your your podcast on a list of you know the 100 most inspirational podcasts out there to listen to it's very humbling and it's a very uh, very much an honor uh, to be on that uh, feed spot 100 uh, inspirational podcasts so, yeah, just looking at the list, we are number 28. And as you move up the list, there's Michelle Obama and her podcast. There's Gretchen Rubin. Uh, there is um, Oprah Super Soul. I mean, it's just it's just mind-blowing. But it's also a reminder where, you know, if you follow my work, you know that I always talk about dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live, and discover the diamond within. Uh, that's my mantra. I'm always about believe it, see it, achieve it. And if I wouldn't have started this journey eight years ago, I wouldn't be on the same list with amazing, inspirational people around the world. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm very honored and I appreciate all of you for tuning in when we're here on Ohm Times Radio. So again, Inspired Living is just one of many great shows on Inspired or on Ohm Times Radio. Uh, so if you want to check out other inspirational, educational, transformative, mystical, metaphysical, uh, you know, Whatever your interest is, make sure to check out Ohm Times Radio, uh, especially as we move into 2023. But we'll be back in January, and we only have this episode and one more episode, and then we are done. So today, I wanted to talk about, uh, as we get into the holidays, the weather also changes. So I'm in Seattle, Washington. I've been here since 2000, so I guess that's, what, 22 years I've lived in Seattle. And for those of you that live north of the equator, uh, we have this thing that we have to deal with when the clocks fall back uh, and when we spring ahead, and it's called SAD. And so today's uh, episode is about healing and navigating SAD days, and SAD is an acronym, S-A-D, uh, something that I became aware of a few years ago. Um, didn't really pay much attention to it, and just, you know, the weather would change, it would get darker. 
But I'm going to talk about some of the things that happen uh, when we go through uh, what we call seasonal affective disorder from uh, symptoms to causes to some of the treatments, uh, ways to be aware of that. Awareness is our greatest agent for change, as Eckhart Tolle reminds us. And because we're in the holiday season, uh, for our inspired listeners out there, I just I want to say happy holidays. And when I say happy holidays, some, you know, depending on where you're at or what your belief system is, some people take offense to that. And I really just want to clear something up when I say happy holidays. When someone says happy holidays to you, instead of Merry Christmas, because Christmas is more of a holiday here um, celebrated um, around the world, but specifically here in the United States, and we have global listeners all around the world. So when I say happy holidays, I'm doing it not for any kind of political correctness, I do it because I'm doing it out of respect for my listeners and all the different religions that celebrate the holiday. So when we start in, we're in November, November 20th is the first holiday and it goes all the way through January 24th. So there's a, there's about 14 different major religious holidays around the world. So when someone says happy holidays to you this year, don't take offense to it. Don't get into a, a debate about it or try to defend Christmas. It really isn't, um, a war on Christmas. It's a way of using your words and your knowledge and your education to say happy holidays because I don't know what you believe in. You don't know what I believe in. And so it's called respect. Respect for others, respect for people, respect for other religions, and respect for yourself. So happy holidays to all of the inspired listeners out there around the world. Um, We just appreciate you joining us on this journey. So if you want to call in, uh, I may take a few calls. Um, Wasn't planning on doing an open call line, but if you want to call in, I'd love to hear, uh, if you're listening right now, how inspired living has helped you this year has it inspired you did it get you reading a new book or looking at a different topic or doing some prospecting what i like to say prospecting which is the same as researching uh for different topics and modalities and uh healing techniques and mindfulness techniques or meditations so if you want to call in i I will open the show up a little bit later here the number to call is one two zero two five seven zero 7057. Uh, love for you to share some feedback, maybe maybe even do a, a live holiday reading for you. You never know what you get with me. And you can also visit us on our Facebook page, which is Inspired Living Radio and Podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Inspired For Us. You can follow us on Twitter, but it, uh, we're kind of hemming and hawing about Twitter these days, but that's also at Inspired For Us. And that's the number four. So it's Inspired, the number for us, all one word, Inspired For Us. You can also follow us at uh, TikTok now under the Intuitive Prospector. And of course, you can always visit my site at marklanehart.com. But if you want to call in, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, we're going to talk about SAD. That number again, one 570 7057 And I would love to hear from any of our inspired listeners out there that are listening around the planet. And that's what's awesome about internet radio. No membership, no password, no username, no BS. Okay, so let's talk about what we're going to share on this Wisdom Wednesday, where I'm going to explore, discover, and prospect with you ways to become aware, to overcome, to heal, and transform through what we call sad days, seasonal affective disorder, on the many soul adventures of life. Now, like I said, if you live north of the upper part of the United States or if you're in the northern hemisphere, you know, going London, I'm thinking London because they're the same latitude and longitude as us, Norway, uh, those countries going north, Alaska, the more north you go, the more you're affected by what we call SAD or seasonal affective disorder. And what it is, it's a type of recurrent major depressive disorder in which episodes of depression can occur during the same season each month or each year. Now, there's also a a disorder called summer uh, affective disorder. So it can actually happen to people in the summer that may not like the vitamin D or the sun. But most people that have been diagnosed with SAD, uh, they usually meet the criteria for, you know, some sort of major depression coinciding with specific season for at least two seasons or at least two years. So when I became aware of SAD, I was doing some reflection and self-inner self, self inner healing work myself, 
And when we would set our clocks back, it would get dark very early here in Seattle. I'm talking 3, 30, 4 o'clock, it's getting dark. And then it doesn't become light again until about 8 o'clock the next morning. So it's a lot of time for darkness. And it was um, it was challenging at times, especially here in Seattle, because there's a lot of, of, of grayness. There's a, not a lot of sun during the winter season. In fact, it's snowing right now as I look out the studio window. And it would impact my emotions, my my mental capacity, my emotional capacity, my physical capacity. And we call this sometimes, you've maybe heard it, uh, referred to it as the winter blues, because the most common seasonal pattern for this de depressive episode is when it appears in the fall or the winter, and then it remits in the spring. So like I said, you can have sad in the summer, but it's typically beginning in the late spring or early summer and then remitting into the fall. So it really is uh, related to changes on the amount of daylight a person receives. And I'm going to talk about that. As a certified healthcare provider, there's a lot that I know about the anatomy and physiology of the body, the mind, the heart, uh, the, the nervous system, the adrenals, the hormones, uh, the brain. It's, it, it's quite interesting uh, how fantastic our body is. And if we take care of it, it can function and perform even better, even when you're in the winter season like we are now and avoid those winter blues. So first and foremost, I wanna give a shout out. I always, uh, during the holidays, I always remind people that there is the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, uh, just because I've been personally impacted by suicide, both family and friends. Uh, and that number to call is always 1-800-273-TALK, 1-800-273 talk or 8255. You can also go to suicidepreventionlifeline.org and it's free. It's always available. It's confidential. You can do it for a friend, a family, your um, family member, yourself. And I always promote uh, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and I always donate to them every year because they do a great service, especially right now with the way the world is, the holiday season coming up and having to deal with these SAD, S-A-D, uh, days that we're dealing with. Now, I believe um, there is also a new hotline. Oh, is it um, right off the top of my head? I want to say for mental health, uh, I believe it's 811. So it's the sister uh, number to 911. So if you have an emergency, obviously you call 911. But I believe 811 is... Um, maybe that's before you start digging. <laughs> I'm trying to think of all the, the different... Um, Maybe I'm thinking of, uh, I'll, I'll look it up after the break, but there's a new, there's a new number similar to uh, 911. You can just get on the internet and look that up. If, if there's a mental health crisis, uh, you can uh, call this number, uh, sister number to 911 that I seem to, can't seem to remember. I'm, I'm remembering 811 because I just did a project on my house and that's it. You have to call before you dig. That's the number you call before you dig into the ground so you don't hurt yourself. So I'll, I'll find that out uh, during the break. So let's, uh, before the break here, let's talk about a few of the symptoms uh, and some of the resources that you can, you know, um, have. And, and again, not everyone with SAD will have the same symptoms. I just want to throw that out there. But according to uh, what's called DSM-5, symptoms commonly associated in, in DSM, sorry, DSM is the Diagnostic and Statistical Ma uh, Manual of Mental Disorders. They go by DSM for short, and it's a guidebook widely used by mental health professionals, uh, especially those in the United States that have been diagnosed or, or have, um, you know, uh, many mental health conditions. And so what they did is they published this back in the American Psychiatric Association, uh, started back in 1952, and the uh, DSM-5, which stands for the fifth edition, was published in 2013. So I just wanted to give you that resource. But not everybody's gonna have the same symptoms when it comes to SAD. You may have feelings of hopelessness, hopelessness and just sadness, and for no reason. And that's, that's some of the things that I experienced before I realized that I was dealing with sad. I just had this sadness. I'm like, why am I sad? I have no reason to be sad. Um, you may have thoughts of suicide or uh, thoughts of suicide behavior. You may have what we call hypersomnia or a tendency to oversleep. Now, when I was researching this for this this podcast and, and, and some other research I was prospecting I was doing on sad, it's interesting because when the, it's more dark out, the actual, the anatomy is uh, interesting because our body reacts to our external environment. And what happens is there's a little gland called the pineal gland that's in the center of the brain 
Uh, some of you may know it as the third eye. Um, it's got this, we call it the third eye because it has the same makeup as an eyeball. Uh, but it lives in the brain and it uses a lot of blood flow, believe it or not, from the heart. As the heart distributes blood from the aorta, this pineal gland or pineal gland, whatever you wanna, however you want to pronounce it, pineal, pineal, uh, uses a lot of blood flow. But what happens is it also secretes melatonin when it's dark out. So when we're normally in this behavior of working and all of a sudden our brain starts secreting this melatonin, naturally it can bring on what we call this, which is called hypersomnia or a tendency to oversleep or want to go to bed. You may have a change in appetite, especially a craving for sweet or starchy foods. That was my that was my crutch, especially sweets. Weight gain would uh, follow with that. So weight gain may be a symptom. You may have uh, just a heavy feeling in the arms or your legs. You may experience a drop in your energy levels, uh, decreased physical activity, uh, just overall fatigue, difficulty concentrating. I know that we've, with this pandemic and everything we've gone through, there's just a lot of fatigue overall and then just difficulty in concentrating. Uh, irritability, maybe you have an increased sensitivity to social rejection. Um, maybe you're avoiding social situations during the holidays because you're suffering from SAD, seasonal affective disorder. So. Some of the symptoms of the summer SAD are also poor appetite, weight loss, insomnia, agitation, and, and anxiety. So can SAD be misdiagnosed? Yes, of course, everything can be misdiagnosed. So I always you know, recommend second opinions if you don't agree with the first. That's why we have lots of doctors out there or, or naturopaths because the word doctor actually the word itself means teacher. So, a, you know, a seasonal affective disorder or SAD can be misdiagnosed. And some misdiagnosed conditions are, you know, hyperthyroidism, hypoglycemia, a viral infection such as uh, mononucleosis. These are all can be, you know, the same uh, impact that you may feel with SAD. So we're gonna go to our first break. And when we come back, we're gonna uh, continue to talk about this uh, during the holiday season uh, where we are healing and navigating SAD days with your host, Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector. We'll be back here in just a few minutes. Stick around, more to come. The future of internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Listeners, we hope you're enjoying the shows here on Ohm Times Radio. Mark Lanehart here and host of Inspired Living Radio. And I'd like to invite you to my morning show of inspiration, encouragement, healing, motivations, transformations, and discovering that diamond within. Metaphysical Mocha Mondays every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, over on the Intuitive Prospector Facebook page and my YouTube channel, Soul Adventures. Dare to dream, dare to explore, Dare to live and discover that diamond within. You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's, who's not, not excited, excited for, for summer, summer break because she may not be having lunch again until September? Or a war veteran who's, who's having, having a hard, hard time, time landing, landing a job and getting back on his feet? I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I am hunger, hunger in, in America. America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. And welcome back to Inspired Living. Happy holidays to you. Thank you for joining us and celebrating a wonderful year of doing shows, podcasts, continuing to inspire to continuing to educate, to motivate, to keep that light uh, burning bright in the world, that vibration of hope and peace and love. 
And I always say, or our tagline for the show is, be inspired, inspire others, and inspire before we expire. So thank you so much for joining us. If you're on the live broadcast, I did uh, say that I would open up the phone line. So if you're interested in having a chat or if you want to share uh, this uh, rest of the show, the number to call is 1-202-570-7057. Uh, Chris, my producer, will put you in the waiting room and then we can bring you live to air. But if you've had an, uh, um, an interaction with Inspired Living this year or the last seven years, maybe you caught a podcast on uh, your favorite podcasting platform because Inspired Living now is streaming through whatever podcasting platform you listen to. And maybe you caught a past show that inspired you or got you thinking outside the box. If you want to call in, I'd love to hear from any of our inspired listeners around the globe. And I know that there are a few of you out there because the Facebook page over this last year has exploded uh, with followers and listeners of the show. So don't be shy. Give us a call. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, during the break, what I did is I went and looked up. Uh, so I was close. Uh, the number for the suicide and crisis lifeline which is through, uh, known as the SAMS HSA, which is the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. The number to call now, it's a national uh, um, lifeline.org, 988 lifeline.org. If you need support or if you're in crisis or you're struggling, or maybe you're hearing today's show and you're like, I never even knew SAD existed, Seasonal Affective Disorder. I had no idea. So you can go on to uh, their website, which is, uh, 988lifeline.org and you can get uh, partner toolkits. Uh, it talks about what Congress did back in uh, 2020 is they designated this new 988 dialing code to be operated through the existing National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So it is a sister to what I was just talking uh, to before uh, with the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So we have 911 for emergencies. We now have 988 for uh, mental health crisis. And uh, I'll just throw in there, uh, free of charge, uh, 811 is if you want to, before you start digging in your yard or doing big projects like I was doing, uh, make sure to call 811 because that'll tell you if there's power lines or anything below the ground that you may not see. So they always say don't don't dig blindly when you're doing projects. Call first and, and just validate and verify or or uh, what's the uh, what's the old quote by Ronald Reagan? Trust but verify. So, um, but thanks for listening today. We're going to just continue to talk about uh, sad and how to heal and transform and become aware uh, to get through those sad days, the seasonal affective disorder days that um, maybe you didn't even know that you were experiencing, like I did. I had no idea, and that's part of why I love doing radio because I learn a lot from different people, people that come on the show share their their uh, their stories, uh, the storytellers, their backgrounds, their education. I'm like, wow, I've never even thought about that. like, for example, the pineal gland that when it gets darker, the body will actually release melatonin into the system. Your nervous system is quite um, <laughs> your uh, your nervous system is quite fascinating in how it operates. Um, Trust in Allah, but tie up your camel. <laughs> Sinbad the Sailor. That's an old movie, Chris. I love that. Sinbad the Sailor. I love those movies. Um, so let's talk about how we can navigate some of these and just to bring the awareness into your reality and maybe things that you didn't even think about. So again, seasonal affective disorder is really, it's unknown. There is really no science to date to show what causes. My theory and my hypothesis is it's based on the physical body responding to the external environment, because what I teach on uh, and what my philosophies and my classes are, are what I teach on are called the PEMS, P-E-M-M-S, because we're more than uh, just a human being. We're a spiritual energetic being first that's incarnated into the physical form to have these human experiences. But we also are a physical being, we're an emotional being, we're a mental being, we're a material being because the material world also impacts us and we're spiritual being depending on, you know, however you want to use that word spiritual for religious or not religious. Uh, but for me, spiritual means that there is life after death. That's just my experiences, my personal experiences and what I teach on. But what the material world is fascinating because, you know, the body's responding to darkness and my theory is that it's the it's the darkness that's that we're in that causes the body um, from the nervous system to the hormones to the brain to shift 
to survive, to protect itself. And like a hibernation, if you will. So it's like a spiritual hibernation, like what bears do, I guess. So the, the cause for SAD is is not known. There is some evidence that it's, it, it is related to the body's melatonin or a hormone that's secreted by that pineal gland that I was just talking about because that regulates the sleep-wake cycle. And, you know, they have, like I said, science has looked at this, but again, at this point, nothing empirical proof of, you know, what is caused SAD. But I'm sticking with my hypothesis that it's probably the material world impacting our nervous system with the production of melatonin and preparing the body for sleep. So as the winter days get shorter and darker, the melatonin produces in the body. And what that does is it increases and people tend to feel sleepier and more lethargic. So uh, just wanted to point that out there from the research that's been done on this. Alternatively, uh, people that are experiencing SAD, like I have, I don't experience it anymore because I've learned how to deal with it, how to get through it, and how to take uh, some really great advice from not only my naturopath, but my mentors and uh, some of my own students that have shared with me. And um, what it comes down to, it, it's just really having trouble regulating the levels of serotonin and that's a neurotransmitter that influences mood. And finally, research has also suggested that people with SAD may also produce less vitamin D in response to sunlight. So I know here in Seattle, because it's gray, here's a little bit of useless information for you listeners out there. Uh, we sell more sunglasses than most parts of the world. And you would think sunglasses are sold because of the sun. No, it's because we always have this glare, this gray glare in Seattle, uh, because where the city is located, the mountains actually trap the clouds over the city. So it's constantly gray. It's gray right now. It's snowing. And we actually sell, we're one of the top, I believe we're one of the top U.S. cities um, that sells sunglasses. So there's a little bit of useless information for you. Uh, I have tons of them. So uh, it doesn't always have to be sunny, in other words, to have sunglasses. <laughs> so... With, with that said, that plays a vitamin D role, and vitamin D is directly a response to sunlight. Vitamin D is believed to play a role in serotonin activity, and again, I learned a lot about the brain, not by choice, but because my brother passed away from brain cancer years and years ago, and I sat down during his journey and during his surgeries, and I actually spoke with brain surgeons, a uh, brain surgeon from here in Seattle, a uh, brain surgeon, surgeon from Duke University, and I learned a lot of fascinating things about how the brain operates, how the brain functions. It really is your computer, your database of how you, you, you know, um, engage with life and how your journey in life goes. And so from those years, those sad years of watching my brother pass into spirit from his glioblastiotoma, I researched a lot about the brain, which directly and I guess indirectly has a lot to do with what I teach today, what I talk about today, whether it's Metaphysical Mocha Mondays or here on Inspired Living or over on my YouTube channel. Uh, or the classes I teach now through Patreon. So it, it's just interesting how much I've learned about the brain uh, based on tragedy. And, you know, the brain, like I said, is just, uh, it regulates so many different hormones. And it, it, vitamin D is definitely one of those that play in the serotonin activity. And an insufficient amount of vitamin D is also associated with clinically significant depression symptoms. And I gave some of those symptoms at the uh, before the break, uh, anything from fatigue, difficulty concentrating, irritability, anxiety, um, uh, avoiding social situations. People don't want to do that usually during the holidays. It could be poor appetite, weight loss, insomnia, agitation. You know, the list goes on and on for those different um, symptoms that you may be experiencing. But vitamin, the insufficient vitamin D level uh, is a direct correlation that they've shown through science. So one of the things that I started doing, uh, and some people may not agree with this, but I actually started tanning. I actually started going to a tanning bed. And yes, <clears throat> you have to sign a waiver. And yes, I know they're taxed. Uh, but it was just to get that sunlight. Even if it's fake, it's still, I know that my body's reacting to it. Now I do it with the natural light. I don't do it to get you know dark and tan. I do it as a modality and as a healing treatment to deal with the insufficient amount of sunlight here. I also load up on vitamin D. So during this time, uh, this time comes around when the clocks fall back, 
I not only change out the batteries in my smoke detectors as a retired firefighter EMT, uh, but I also uh, order up um, a big dose of vitamin D that I take through the winter months to help deal with that insufficient vitamin D that I'm getting or not getting. And then also we also take a trip down to our place in San Jose, Los Cabos, at least once, if not twice a year, just to get that Mexican sun, that Mexican um, surf, uh, just the experience. We love going to Mexico. Been going to Mexico for over 15 years. I love it down there. Uh, love the people. People always say, are you worried about going down there? Been 15 years of going down there, everybody. Never had an issue. Uh, people are very kind and humble and polite, and uh, they have a lot of sun down there, so a lot of sun to share. So we go down to Mexico to get that level of vitamin D that we're missing. <clears throat> there are several known factors to increase an individual's chance of developing SAD. Here's an example. is It's more frequent in people who live far north or south of the equator. So I said that at the opening of the show. If you're up on the same latitude and longitude where I'm at in Seattle in the Pacific Northwest, heading up towards Alaska, um, there are um, indicators that people that live farther north or farther south that get more darkness uh, have um, chances of developing SAD or seasonal affective disorder. So um, additionally, people with a family history, that's always important. We're, we're, we're we're dealt the cards that we have to play, and sometimes that includes genetics, and that also includes family history uh, that may have influences over us that we didn't even know about. And that's something that I had definitely uh, learned with in my my family's past and my family history as far as um, depression um, and some other you know medical conditions that you know sometimes I have to be aware of myself. So with that, um, your history and your genetics may also. Uh, have a chance or more likely to develop sad than people that don't have such a family history like that. And I really wonder if people, as we get older, if, if that's the reason why people move down to the equator, down to where the sun is, because you just feel better. So the seasonal affective disorder or sad is estimated right now based on the research I've done. It affects about 10 million Americans. So that's about, you know, percentage of 320 million Americans uh, in the United States, uh, that's a pretty good percentage. Another 10% to 20% may have mild SAD. So you may not have full SAD, but you may have mild SAD. And SAD is four times more common in women than in men. So for you women listeners out there, this is actually four more times common. And that's not including what's going on with your life. Uh, maybe you just brought a, a new baby into the world uh, post um, uh you know, dealing with the, the symptoms of that. So, you know, for women, just pay attention to that because uh, the age of the onset is estimated to be between the ages of 18 and 30. And some people will experience uh, symptoms severe enough to affect their quality of life. And then 6%, which is a small percent, but that's still um, a few million people require hospital hospitalization and or treatment for that. So with the research I've done, I, um, they said that, um, Many people with SAD report at least <clears throat> one relative, one close relative with a psychiatric disorder, <clears throat> most uh, frequently a severe depression uh, disorder um, or alcohol abuse. <clears throat> so just take those behaviors and your, your genetics and your family's past into mind when you're dealing with SAD. Sorry, I had to get a little drink there. I had a little frog in my throat. <clears throat> So what are some of the treatments? So those are some of the symptoms. That's a little bit about what SAD is. Like I said, uh, we're just I'm just sharing this with you because it's some of the uh, my own journey that I've learned and became aware of and, and overcame. And one of the examples of overcoming this by, be, by paying attention to SAD is for many years, and you may have heard me say this on a past show, uh, is I dreaded the month of January. About three years ago, my, my mantra was, if I can get through January, I can get through the rest of the year. And my mentor said, why don't you take the month of December off? And she's, uh, bless her, she's now in spirit. She made her transition to spirit uh, about a month and a half ago. But I can still hear her, her words. Why don't you take the month of December off and just take the time to disconnect so you have the time to reconnect? And that will prepare you for January to hit the ground running. Because for me, January was such a tough month because both my brothers passed into spirit. My brother that was murdered in January, January 23rd, and then my older brother that, that I was just talking about with the brain cancer, he passed into spirit January 5th. So both of my brothers passed in January, and I always dreaded that, and I couldn't figure out why. Well, a lot of it had to do with survivor's guilt and SAD, seasonal affective disorder, that really 
impacted my mental capacity, definitely lack of social activities, didn't want to socialize with anybody. But three years ago, when I started taking this break in December, uh, which I said, we only have one more show of Inspired Living, then we'll be uh, doing encore shows until January 2023. But by doing that break and taking the time to disconnect so I can make the time to reconnect to self, to my world, to my friends, to my family, it made a big difference and it helped me affect uh, in, in effect, deal with sad, but also help me get over survivor's guilt, which I probably dealt with for about 20 years, to be honest with you. So once I overcame sad and once I overcame survivor's guilt, January, bring it on. Let's go. Let's rock and roll. Right. So one of the treatments that we can do is, like I said, you know, find, you know, maybe make a trip to go someplace warm that has sun. It doesn't have to be Mexico. Uh, it could be Europe. It could be, uh, you know, Gosh, think of all the great places that have sun, you know, whatever your, you know, uh, whatever your favorite location to travel and go take a soul adventure and get some vitamin D. Self-care is so important as part of the treatment, especially for those that have sad. It's important to remember to monitor your mood and your energy levels during the winter blues. Take advantage of any available sunlight, even if it's a tanning bed. I know there will be some controversy on that. Some people believe in it. Some people say it causes skin cancer. I get it. I just, I, I also, in my studio right now, I have a lamp. I have a sun lamp in my studio that the light bulb can change different colors, green, red, orange, blue, regular white light. And I turn that on and I have it facing towards me as a way to try to bring in more light of, uh, you know, whether it's um, real sunlight or whether it's fake sunlight. Sunlight still helps. Plan pleasurable activities for the winter season. So we like to get out and do some snowshoeing in the winter. Uh, that can be really helpful in getting out and you know planning some sort of social pleasurable, pleasurable activity with others. Um, make some physical activities as well. We really like snowshoeing because it's physical and it gets us out and it also um, is, is a social activity if, if you go with others, which I highly recommend. So we're going to pause right there. We're going to go to our final break. And when we come back, we're going to continue to talk about the treatments and how to heal and transform and get through those very sad days of life. We'll be right back of Inspired Living Radio. <laughs> The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, Radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile, mile in, in my, my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, 
that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. to Inspired Living. We're t- today we're talking about healing and navigating sad days on the many soul adventures of life. And SAD stands for Seasonal Affective Disorder. And one of the things before the break, we were talking about a few of the treatments that we can do. And one of the treatments we can do right now is to, what I like to say, practice the pause. Become aware of the now. There's great power in the now. So if you're listening to my voice, practice, stop what you're doing. Take a nice deep breath. Good, but take one more. And last but not least, the power of three. Take a nice, deep, cleansing, healing breath, breathing in what you want. And releasing what you don't, including releasing sad, seasonal affective disorder. The power of breath. We always forget about breath. We look at all these external things in our world, how many pills we can take, what you know, experts we can go to. But just a reminder for the inspired listeners out there, you have great ability to heal from the inside out, not from the outside in. And that is uh, goes through the power of breath. I will be doing some uh, new episodes in 2023 uh, with experts and myself uh, on the power of breath. It's something I've been uh, getting certified in, as well as I'm now a certified sound uh therapist. So I work with singing bowls and sound therapy. So these are things that you can do, including the breath work, I believe, and I've done Soma breath work. I've done Wim Hof breath work, which can put you into a state of hypoxia, which helps you feel better. It also triggers and generates the nervous system. It can help with your mindfulness. It can help with your agitation, your anxiety. So I just wanted to practice the pause and move back into the magic of the moment and the importance of remembering the power that's in now creating the future you want for tomorrow. So continue with some of the self-care, some of the uh, treatments that you can do if you're if you're dealing with seasonal affective disorder or SAD is, you know, like I said, plan those physical activities. Approach the winter season with a positive attitude. I really had to change my attitude towards January, uh, you know, and have an attitude for gratitude and flip the script to say, you know what, January, I'm no longer going to dread you because I'm de- I was dealing with sad or I had done my own self work or I had gotten the right counseling or the right mentorship. And I was having survivor's guilt because both my brothers moved into the spirit world and left me behind and left their families behind. Now I look at that because I approach that with a different mindset. And again, you know, uh, we can even use a little George Lucas quote here. Your focus determines your reality. So if my focus is on nothing but bad and sad and, and survivor's guilt and negativity for January, then guess what? My reality is going to reflect that back to me like a mirror. So these are some self-help care tips that you can do. Uh, you know, one of the things that I, I love is to just lighten up. Try to get outside as often as you can and just soak up more light, even if the sun's not out. Sometimes I just go out and put my face to the sky. If it's raining or snowing, I did it last night because it was snowing. But just go out when the weather permits and just try to walk every day that you're able. You know, keep your window shades open. Uh, set in your workstation near a window. Like right now, I'm broadcasting from my studio window and I have my lamp that's shining right into my face as a, you know, just a, a, an example of how to deal with sad. Another option is light therapy. Uh, some of my coworkers down at my uh, uh, office in uh, downtown Seattle have brought in uh, these light boxes that are specifically designed to uh, emit light about 20 times brighter than typical indoor lights. And so you walk by their their workspace or their cube and like, man, they are just shining bright like a diamond. That's because they're trying to bring more vitamin D, more um, artificial light into uh, their uh their bodies, but also because they're probably trying to get past sad. Light therapy is usually recommended for about 30 minutes a day, and it tends to be most use, the most useful thing in the morning. So when you're trying to wake up and trying to get that melatonin secretion that's been, that the pineal gland has been dropping into your nervous system and into your hormones, get some light going, get some physical activity, try some breath work, try meditation. The goal really is to mimic the light you'd normally get outside during the sunnier seasons of the year 
But right now, we don't have that. So we have to make do with what we we can do or what we have. Get moving. Uh, regular exercise uh, increases serotonin levels in, levels in the brain, uh, which can help fight off seasonal sadness. Uh, so, you know, get get busy moving, get busy living, or get busy dying. That's a, that's a quote from the Shawshank Redemption, one of my favorite movies. So it's always a reminder to me, get busy, get busy living, get busy moving, or get busy dying, right? So... Regular exercise just can really help with the brain. Think of it not just of exercising to get in shape. That's a good thing, too. But think of it from a mental health standpoint that you're actually releasing chemicals, um, serotonin, dopamine, uh, different hormones, and these chemicals react in the brain. Uh, like I said, if you do some research on your own to, to just realize how in- amazing the brain is. We've done past episodes of neuroplasticity, how the brain can rewire itself, how the brain reacts to external environments. So, you know, try a yoga class. I do Qigong in the morning to get my energy going. Qigong uh, is known as the mother of Tai Chi, and Qigong just stands for life energy and the study or focus of. So yoga, a hike in the mountains, any form of exercise really can do the trick just to get going. Eat healthy. Uh, Research has been showing that healthy nutrition uh, is important as part of the holistic healing. Again, the healing can come from within. It doesn't have to come from an external source where you pay thousands and thousands of dollars. It's free as long as you're just listening to podcasts like this or my, you know, my research, and you can get out there and do it for yourself and do it for free and start feeling better. Right? That's the whole. That's why we're here in Inspired Living is to inspire, to be inspired, and to inspire before we expire. So research has really shown that healthy nutrition as part of the holistic healing uh, is very important for the sad. Choose recipes that contain natural mood boosters such as dark leafy greens, dark chocolate, nuts and seeds, fish, and I love avocados. So avocados for my nachos, chips and avocados and salsa, love that. And avocados are awesome during the winter uh, season for those winter blues. Try to balance your energy. Uh, this is another important aspect because we think in terms of just being a physical flesh suit working a nine to five job. Again, listeners, you're so much more than that. You are energy, you are frequency, you are vibration. And if you go back even to you know Nikola Tesla, he talked about if you want to you know intersect and, and understand the universe, think in terms of energy frequency, vibration, your energy source. You have an energy, you have an auric field, you have a soul. Um, You may not have known that until just now, but everybody has that energy, that soul. And one of the things you can do is release emotional baggage that may be holding you back. You know, the old saying goes, hold on and get dragged or let go and be free. And balancing your energy with any kind of energy healing like Reiki or, um, you know, in my studio here now, I have a whole set of 528, uh, 528 hertz, uh, which are the healing frequency, sound frequency, breath uh, exercise, energy awareness, all important. Uh, there's a lot of great books out there. Um, I, I know that we've had a few people uh, request to come on Inspired Living uh, that talks about this. Uh, so maybe we'll have them on in 2023. But what it does, it's just a, it's a, um, it's a way to release baggage and become aware of your own energy so you can prevent the symptoms of seasonal affective disorder or at least reduce its severity, right? You may not get rid of it altogether, but as long as you can manage it and it's not overwhelming and you can decrease it and get it down to partial and then get it down to, to almost zero like I did, I, I didn't get rid of it right away. It took me some time and practice and you know everything I'm talking about here to, to bring that in during the winter months and then it got better and better and, and sad got less and less. But it can just help you let go of those emotions. And by letting go of something, metaphysically, spiritually, scientifically, you create more space. And then you decide what do you want to fill that space with? More joy, more healing, more happiness, more transformations. And to really just reveal that diamond within. So, you know, those are just a few remedies uh, for a holistic standpoint. Lighten up. You know, eat healthy, get moving, lots of hydration, good sleep, but don't oversleep. You know, set your alarm because you are dealing with that melatonin coming from the pineal gland. Surround yourself, like I said, with daylight. Try to maintain your daily schedule. This is very important because as the seasons are changing, I'm not a big fan of of setting the clock back. I hope in the future as we move forward that our... um, our Congress and our government will actually legislate and actually approve 
um, which they're supposed to in 2023. Rumor has it that they're going to get rid of falling back and springing ahead and just stay with Pacific Standard Time so we don't have these fluctuations because it, it really, you know, back in the day it was more for agriculture and you know, longer days to, you know, do the harvest. But today it's not really needed. And of course, energy is, is a big part of that too, energy and how much energy you use when we go to darkness. So, you know, maintaining a daily schedule when we, even when we fall back, try to maintain your schedule, um, you know, but changing it doesn't mean your schedule has to, right? So if you're used to going for a morning run, stick to that routine. If the weather may be colder, but we have technology, I've got a mirror, which is uh, in my garage. So if it's snowing or cold out, I can just go in my garage and the mirror is actually an interactive. It's a mirror which reflects me, but it also has online classes where I can try to, you know, get rid of uh, this extra holiday weight that I may have put on. But I try to stay with that even if the weather has changed. And again, if you've gotten into the habit of going into the office more over the summer months, carry this on despite the chillier mornings uh, because it just helps with maintaining that daily schedule. So setting yourself goals for the day will also put you in a more motivated mindset. Um, I definitely believe that. And exercise often, eat well, keep in regular touch with your loved ones, whether it's your text or over the phone or via video or in person. Uh, amp up your self-care routine, just amp it up. Like I said, get more vitamin D, uh, You know, maybe try some breath work, try some different exercise and, and just see where it takes you to help you heal and transform those sad days on our many soul adventures of life. And there's a lot of research and a lot of resources out there that you can do on your own. So I don't think we had anybody call in. I was hoping for at least one caller uh, just to you know maybe share. Maybe we can do that in December with our last podcast, or maybe I'll do an open line show in early 2023. Because I want to, I would love to hear from you listeners out there, uh, whether it's live or from a former podcast that you listen to, is how inspired living is impacting your life, how it's helping you, um, hopefully not hurting you, uh, but helping you to think outside the box, to be inspired, to be motivated, to encourage, uh, to go do things that you never even thought about doing. So again, if, if you want to call in, that number to call, it's always the same number. It's on our Facebook posts. It's on our social media posts. It's 1-202-570-7057. That comes into the Ohm Times Radio uh, hotline and Chris, the producer, uh, will put you in the waiting room if you want to come on the air with me. Uh, and if you don't, that's okay. I just it was kind of a last minute thing. I didn't really plan on that, but I'll. I think what I'll do is I'll set an intention for 2023 as we come back for our uh, eighth season uh, to do an open phone lines where I can do uh, live readings. I uh, can hear from you on you know maybe what you want to hear in 2023 and help us keep uh, help keep inspired living on that top 100 uh, inspirational podcast to follow and listen to in 2022 and again try to pay that forward to 2023 so again if you want to follow us you can follow us over on youtube under inspired living under the ohm times radio network uh facebook inspired living radio and podcasts instagram and twitter under inspired for us TikTok now. We're on TikTok, The Intuitive Prospect, and of course, my website's marklanehart.com. And with that, I think I've about gotten everything. I do want to just say, because this is a solo episode podcast this week, next, uh, in two weeks, we're going to have a special guest talking all about the angels. But I just want to say um, a very heartfelt thank you to Ohm Times, uh, Chris and Liani, who run Ohm Times, and him putting up with me for this year. Um, and, uh, allowing me to do inspired living on their awesome network like i said it's been seven seasons and i'm looking forward to the eighth season which from a numerology standpoint eight is all eight is all about infinity manifesting and of course business minded leadership and is the eight from a numerology standpoint so i'm looking forward to january i'm looking forward to the eight seasons of inspired living and i just want to say uh thank you to everybody including my team behind the scenes that now corresponds um I just want to give them a shout out as well because they've been really helping me respond to a lot of emails I get now from PR firms and marketing firms to have be a guest on Inspired Living. So I want to give a shout out to the Inspired Living radio team. If you're listening, you know who you are. Thank you so much to uh, all of you. And of course, uh, Ohm Times and you, Chris, thank you uh, for a fantastic year. And last but not least, 
all of you amazing inspired listeners out there around the globe you inspire me to do these shows because there are times i don't want to do the show uh maybe i'm uh, having a battle uh with sad and i'm not i don't have enough vitamin d and uh you know and I, then i think about the listeners and some of the feedback i've gotten over the last few years and some of the testimonials and reviews that have been left uh whatever your major podcasting platform is um we get reviews all the time. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you hanging out with me this season. And I promise in 2023, we're going to try to make it a very more inspirational, encouraging, motivating uh, platform uh, with some amazing, awesome guests that's full of knowledge and wisdom. And I just, I, I love doing this. So thank you so much. And again, I hope today's episode of healing and transforming and navigating Uh, through sad days on your many soul adventures of life, the treatments, the causes that you become just more aware of seasonal affective disorder. And last but not least, I just want to leave you with uh, that last number, uh, which is 988. That is the mental health number. And it's the sister number now to the suicide prevention lifeline as we move into the holidays. And that number again is 1-800-273-TALK, 1-800-273-8255, or the suicidepreventionlifeline.org. There are sources out there to help you, to you know, talk to, to encourage you. And with that, until our next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. And most importantly, wherever you're at in the world, dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live. And I hope you discover that diamond within. Take care, everybody. Happy holidays. Namaste.